All right, guys, welcome back to Delve In Inspired. And today is a special episode because I'm sitting here with James Whitehead, um, who is a community activist um, and lead ward for his district. And also, he was just sworn in into the uh, executive state committee, and he is the first black Republican the first black Republican to get sworn into that position today. So congratulations, Mr. Whitehead. Thank you so much for joining me. me. Yes. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm actually feeling very good today. Well, that's good good to know. Good to know. Now, um, you, sir, are from Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. And you were born and raised out here or you? Yeah, so so, so portion of it was in Brooklyn, New York, and the other portion was um, Philadelphia. Frankfurt mm-hmm. section, to be exact, you know what I mean. So that's how uh, that's how it started. So a portion of it was in uh, New York, and the other half was in Philadelphia. Okay, great. Well, um, tell us a little bit about this new position that you're about to take on, being in the uh, as, as a executive state uh, committee. All right. So the executive state committee mm-hmm. is um, simply talking about how. Uh, to get people to the actual polls to vote, so I work really hand to hand with a lot of the city commissioners, rather than Democratic or Republican. Mm-hmm. And I took that rule on because there wasn't a city commissioner, I mean, not, not a city commissioner. I'm sorry, but it wasn't an executive Republican committee person in my neighborhood for almost 15 years. Mm-hmm. So I figured to actually have to fill that role because there was no one from the Republican side of the party to actually fill that role in and get people to come out to vote. So that was my that's my role. So state executive committee is not only responsible for getting people to actually vote, mm-hmm. but it's to educate the people on who's running. Okay. You understand some sense it was besides getting people to come out to vote, there was to educate the people on who was running and I did a good job at that. Like mm-hmm. the past November and um Besides the party was, it was to hold it with no bias. So regardless if you were Republican or Democrat, my role was to get you in tune with what was going on. Got you. Now, being as though you are Republican, um, you still support the Democratic Party, correct? All right, so... (laughs) (laughs) Because, you know, we talked about that. All right, so so, uh, I'll break it down. All right, so... My goal is to be, mm-hmm. uh, when you say support the Republican Party, uh-huh. uh, the Demo- I'm sorry, the Democratic Party, mm-hmm. my goal here is to be as bipartisan as possible because I truly believe that, you know, Republicans may not have all the answers or Democrats surely don't have all the answers, but it's to, to gather the best from both parties, mm-hmm. right? So my my goal is to get both of the parties to come together, right? Okay. Because Republicans don't have all the answers, and Democrats, sure as hell, don't have all the answers. Right. So it's like, okay, if we hear each other out, mm-hmm. then we'll be more willing to listen to each other, right? So that was okay. my thing. I, I wanted to be in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. the, one of the greatest young bipartisan, you know, politicians in the state of Pennsylvania, in the city of Philadelphia. Because we need both parties in order to to come together. Because my my, my greatest fear is mm-hmm. the greatest fear that I have is that the polarization between both parties increase to the point where we fuck around might have a civil war between both. Mm. Because you do have black conservatives that are Republican mm-hmm. that just are registered Democratic. You understand? So it's right. like I want people to move away from party mm. to look at individuals a lot more. That makes sense. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Because, and, and I want to speak on that because I feel like as the black community, um, I feel that we try to divide each other. The Democratic right. Party, the Republican Party. And if you are a Republican or you vote Republican and you're mm. black, it's, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll try to cancel you, you know, sabotage you, all types of things. And it's like, why do we have that mindset, some of us? I feel like the mindset is being ushered and grandfathered in. Mm, right? So, wow. It's almost like when you come out the womb, you're not, you're not taught parties mm. and positions. 
I mean, I'm sorry. When you come out the wound, you're not, you don't come out the wound saying I'm Democratic or Republican. Mm-hmm. You're taught. So I feel like, it's almost like what Kanye West said. It was yeah. like, we've been grandfathered and ushered in under the regime to be Democratic. Like, mm, definitely. Long story short, what did Joe Biden say when he went to the Breakfast Club? He stated this. Mm-hmm. Anybody watching would understand anybody on my love, anybody. Mm-hmm. He said, you're not black. Mm-hmm. You don't vote for me. Right? Anybody, the engineers, the people mm-hmm. that do the lighting, I don't know if yourself, people that's probably watching. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's colored at one point or another was democratic because we've been taught that. Right. Definitely. And we've, well, a lot of black people have come from um, a democratic, you know, household. Right. You know, that's how, and and you're right about that. We're kind of like born into it in a sense, you know, because we're going to vote how our our families voted, our moms and our fathers, you know. So, yeah, but it really takes you, you have to educate yourself. You have to educate yourself. Now, the best, the thing is, Mm -hmm. A lot of people vote, vote blindly, right? So Definitely. they go in and they go, oh, this is the Republican side, the Democratic side. If you've mm-hmm. been ushered in mm-hmm. under a regime that you're mm-hmm. Democratic, you're just going to continuously press Democratic all the way down the line from the top to the bottom. Yes, I'm guilty of that, okay? I am. You were guilty yeah, of that? Yeah, I am There's guilty, no, you know, no but I was, I was young and I didn't know any better. That's so, cool. That's if you're cool. a Democrat, you just go down the line. You just click it down, and you, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. You, just, you 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 simply just uh huh. Click down the line, yeah. Democratic. You don't know the people yep. that you're actually and voting half for. Half the time you don't. Yep. You don't know. Yeah. Right. You just been taught and ushered under the regime that. Mm-hmm. Okay, if it's Democrat, it's good for Black people. Right. 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 Now, I'm not saying that they're not. Mm-hmm. But. The other side can't be totally wrong. Yeah, everything on every matter. Think about this: on every matter, the other side mm-hmm. can't be wrong on everything, right? I agree. You remember, you know how you get into an argument and you mm-hmm. go, you know, you get into an argument with your mm-hmm. mate and you go, "It's two sides. It's his side, right? My side, and then it's the truth." Mm-hmm. It takes education to actually get to a point where you know the truth, right? Mm-hmm. You go. All right, I, I'm here on the Democratic side. I'm here on the Republican side. Mm-hmm. But in the middle, where's the meat? What can I take from the Democratic Party and the Republican Party? Facts from both sides. Now, yeah. the thing is, whatever we use, it's, it's, it's important to understand that regardless of the party, it's to know your own knowledge. Mm-hmm. I don't want people my biggest thing is I don't want people to get caught up in party I want people to get caught up in individuals yeah right because we have crooked politicians on the Democratic side we have crooked politicians on the Republican side right, right? definitely we have, we have Republicans dressed as Democratic and we have Democrats that mm-hmm. were, we have Republicans that dressed as Democratic and we have Democrats that were dressed as Republicans but you just I just want people to be knowledgeable about what's actually going on yeah educate yourself Instead of parties, because, mm-hmm. like I told you, people would simply just vote down the line. Right. Go Democratic, state rep, mm-hmm. 190, 180. Democratic. Straight down the line. Attorney general. Yeah. Democratic. Government. But what do, right, now, what can we do? Because people are getting crucified, literally, because they may go along with the Republican Party. What do you think we should do? Like, for instance, you know, people bash Kanye. Um, Another one, Chrisette Michelle, Mm -hmm. when she went and did the um, the song for the inauguration for President Trump. um, You know, how can we as people, like, how do we put it into that? You know, let people vote or support as they please. Like, what do you think needs to happen? I think that 
<laughs> That's good. She asked me that. The reason mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you what I think needs to happen. I think what needs to happen is the media needs to play a lesser role. Mm. I think that's social media. And uh, the media, like I told you, like I said before, before we started, I said polarization. The polarization is when you have, when you look at a chart, you go, how big mm-hmm. the opposition divides, mm-hmm. right? You have Republicans, you have Democrats, the polar opposites, polarization, the polarization mountain. So you go, oh, Democrats are moving away from Republicans at this at this rate. And they use your chart. And mm-hmm. the chart looks like a mountain. So they call it the polarization. So I feel like um, when it comes to politics, whether you're Democrat or Republican, mm-hmm. what it's going to take is Actually, understanding. Okay. Right. Like, 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 like the respect of both. I want this is what I want from both parties. I want mm-hmm. the respect between both. Mm-hmm. You may like chocolate. Mm-hmm. I may like vanilla. Mm-hmm. Right. And I might look at you and go, "Okay, this is the difference between the two. Right. You entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. Yes. And what I want to understand, what people don't understand is. Mm-hmm. You may like vanilla cho- vanilla ice cream, I may like chocolate. That's mm. your opinion. We can't debate about that. Right. But when it comes to facts, we there's no there's no there's no Yeah. There's no facts about it. It's the facts are the facts, right? You know what I'm saying? Like right. you're entitled to your you're entitled to your own facts, but not but mm. not the opinion. Right? Yeah. So that's what I want people to understand. Like you're entitled to your own opinion, but mm. not your own facts. And the best way to bring both parties together is to understand that you know what, regardless of party, I want to look into individuals, right? Regardless of what their party is, because you have crooked politicians on the Democratic side mm-hmm. as much as you have it on the Republican side. Exactly, exactly. But I want people to understand one thing: when you look, understand your core morals, mm-hmm. your values, what integrity, all of that will build you up as a person. And figure out what politician, regardless of party, mm-hmm. fits and align with your views. Right. Because the first number one thing is when people before people vote for, for politicians, they go, "I have a family," right? Mm-hmm. They go, "I have a family." Mm-hmm. They go, "I have a husband. I have kids." Mm-hmm. Underneath my household, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I go. I don't want my daughter doing this. I don't want my daughter seeing this. I don't want my daughter doing that. I don't want my son. I don't want... I don't, I, regardless, nobody can tell you how to raise your kids. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So you might be like, I don't want to raise my kids a certain type of way or in a certain regime. So I tell people to understand the guides, your household, mm-hmm. how you, your morals, your core values, your standards, mm-hmm. and find the best candidates that suit your life. Your life. Yeah. Definitely. That's it. Wow. That's the, that's the way we decrease this polarization between parties. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's get into, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, Phil- Philadelphia, for instance. How do you feel about, you know, stop and frisk? How do I feel about stopping frisk? Yes. <laughs> I, I would love your opinion on that. Uh, do you uh, think that's something that definitely needs to happen? Do you think that it's too, you know, too much going on as far as, you know, the you, cops, you know, taking out black men? You know, what what do you really think should happen? I mean, because look at the city, the crime rate and everything else. I mean, what do you really think? I'll be real <laughs> with you. Okay. It's a gift and a curse. Mm, okay. And the reason why I say that is it's quite simple, right? Okay. I grew up in Philadelphia. Even in time living in New York for this, the amount of time that I did, there was stop and frisk. Mm-hmm. The stop and frisk, it's almost like if I know every four or five blocks mm-hmm. that I come across, mm-hmm. That is police there to stop and frisk me. 
I'm less likely to have a gun. Okay. Now, just, just follow me. Like, everyone, anyone is listening. I don't want anybody to understand this. I'm, I understand the reason to stop stopping and frisk because statistically, mm-hmm. it was shown that it didn't really, when they stopped African-American black mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. when they stopped black men across the United States, even in Philadelphia, the, the statistics didn't support the cause. Okay. You understand? So they're going... I pulled James over, right? I mm-hmm. pulled James over, but he ain't have a gun, right? He go, mm-hmm. oh, he ain't have a gun on him. Oh. But why? Because they knew every three, four, five blocks that I walked down, mm-hmm. there's a possibility that the police is allowed to stop me, so I'm less likely to carry a gun. Look, 2014, 2015, 2016, Philadelphia had some of the lowest numbers in homicides. We had mm-hmm. Mayor Nutter as the, as the mayor. Mm-hmm. We had... um. The, uh, I forgot his, the, the DA name. I forgot to think his name is. I think it was Seth. Maybe I'm wrong. It's Seth Williams. I think it's Seth Williams. And we had Charles Ramsey. Charles Ramsey is, um, to me, one of the greatest, one of the greatest police commissioners mm-hmm. in the city of Philadelphia history. He was so big that Barack Obama took him underneath his cabin. Now he's doing political pundit. Okay. 2014, 2015, 2016, this is facts. Like, Philadelphia had 220 murders in 2014. Mm. Right? Like, yeah. This, mm-hmm. is, this is unprecedented. Like, we had, mm-hmm. when it came to big cities in the city of Philadelphia, mm-hmm. in 2014, we was at the lowest. We had, like, 200. So, what changed? What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, like it's... it's Damn near uh, triple, uh, <laughs> you know, like what, what it quad, happened? It damn near quadruple. I, you know? double, yeah. I ain't gonna say it's tri- quadruple or triple, mm-hmm. but I wanna, I wanna lie. Okay. With people underneath the bus, but <laughs> it definitely doubled, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. last uh, in twenty twenty, Philadelphia had four hundred ninety nine homicides on record. I, be- okay. I truly believe it was more than that. They just wanted to throw it in there to people. Okay, it's just a roundabout number. Just a roundabout yeah. number. I believe, but on record, they had 499. Oh. Right? Which is like 10 from the record. Yeah. Facts, right? Yeah. Now, Philadelphia had almost 499 homicides in 2020. Mm-hmm. And then in 2021, we broke the record for 565, 562. Mm. Do you think, before we go any further, do you think we should continue to publicize these numbers? No. Yeah, I think so too. I don't think we should publicize it because yeah. they get... Yep, oh uh, definitely. They get rotty up because people, yep. like, I remember I remember in 2006 when I graduated high school in Philadelphia at mm-hmm. the time, they were, it was this DVD. It wasn't really a DVD. Maybe it was, right? I don't remember because mm-hmm. it was... Shit, I'm old. You know, I'm 35. <laughs> I'll be 35. I'll be 35 going into 2023. I'm old. So, there was this DVD. This is a big guy. It was, it was like some big guy. I was like, yo, let's increase the murder. He actually made a rap song. It's called Increase the Murder. I, what? I'm at, when I leave here, I'm well, going to... What's the rapper? I don't know his name. It was just an unknown underground rapper. And he rapped mm-hmm. about increasing the murder rate because when Philadelphia... when In 2006, Philadelphia uh-huh. had... 406 homicides. Facts. Okay. Right? And I remember listening to The Golden Girl by Philadelphia is the homicide capital, murder capital of Philadelphia. Uh-huh. I remember listening to that at nighttime. We got to stop the killer. So in 2006, Philadelphia had 406 homicides and in mm-hmm. 2007, we had 397. Facts. Mm-hmm. I'm not lying to you. Mm-hmm. And I remember going listening to the DVD rap because I was real big in the, to, to, to the... Uh, to, DVD um, era The DVD era uh-huh. I grew up in that You okay. know what I mean Okay yeah And the guy was like Increase the murder rate Increase the murder rate Oh my rate. god and, Yo he was rapping I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, have to look that up Cause I never knew pull that up, pull Yeah up. I'm gonna pull it up too I might text you tonight Oh my goodness Okay Don't get mad at me If I text you no. at 2.30 tonight I, I won't <laughs> Cause this right. is important I need to see this for myself it, Yeah it was, it's just actual <laughs> song If you put it in If you wow. put it in If you put it in there It's just, it's just big Big Probably like six three six uh-huh. four guy who's like, yeah, increase the murder rate. Increase but the yeah, murder but rate. yeah, like I say, it doesn't need to be publicized. It doesn't need to be publicized it, because when people hear these numbers, that go, oh, like to be honest with you, and uh-huh. I'm gonna I'm keep it real. I'm mm-hmm. a, I know I'm gonna get people upset, mm-hmm. but they call me good trouble for a reason. Phil, mm-hmm. uh, uh, all across the United States, they want to be known as the bad guys, the yes. guys that are not 
fuck around with. Definitely. Right? They wouldn't be the guys to not be fucking around with. Like when it comes to Philadelphia, go, oh yeah, oh, Philadelphia is dangerous. Right, right. right. So, but that's a great point. Talking yep. about it. I was just saying this. They was, so, yeah. about us talking about it, right? They're mm-hmm. going to go, well, Philadelphia has 600 homicides, which mm-hmm. make it the murder capital. So when you talk about that in mm-hmm. a sense of violence, mm-hmm. the young kids are going to go, that's all we know. So we have to be, we have to push this number over top of Chicago to be more dangerous in Chicago, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We got to push this number over per capita because when we talk about murders, St. Louis is at the most dangerous city in America, but doesn't it get a lot of light in pop culture? It doesn't. In hip hop culture, St. Louis is a dangerous city. Yeah. It's a dangerous city when you compare it to small cities or big cities. Mm-hmm. When you judge crime, you judge it per capita. Mm-hmm. When it comes to large cities, New York, Probably had like four hundred some homicides last year mm-hmm. with organized gangs. We got they got in New York. Mm-hmm. They have Bloods. They have Crips. They have BDS. They have GDS. That that's not. They have all type of gangs. Mm-hmm. Philadelphia don't have that. Mm-hmm. We had that in a sense because you got the zoo gang. Mm-hmm. You right. have this gang, but so it's like that in a sense. But it's not as organized as old crime, right? The mm-hmm. old crime laws when we had, um, I forgot that movie Beanie Siegel played in. It was the Get Down Late on JBM. Okay. We had gangs. We had organized crime. Mm-hmm. Even in South Philadelphia, when you had all the the, 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 the Bambino family, you had, you, had, you had crime lords. But it went away when the feds put it into it. So it was just Philadelphia. It was a free-for-all. Wow. Um, so so Phil- there's no, um, how would we say it? No one controlling. Nah, it's, <laughs> Philadelphia no is not organized crime. It's yeah. no Bloods and Crips here. Yeah. So when you have when you have organized, Just everybody, yeah, I think yeah. that's the problem too. Right, organized crime go. Not not you know saying that that's a great thing to it's have not organized a great crime, but you know what I'm saying. But when you just good. have people just buck wild and there's nobody overseeing these people, then you're just going to have it's just going to think it's going to increase. Yeah, it's free for all, right? <laughs> so so when people say, "Yo, Philadelphia don't got gangs like New York and LA and Chicago," mm-hmm. I go, eh, "You might be wrong about that, right?" Because mm-hmm. it's like. It's like Philadelphia has gang in a sense, right? Because you have the zoo gang, you have um, the brickyard gang, you have a gang up in Frankfurt, and they're warm with streets. Mm-hmm. So you have blocks, okay. or then you have gangs. Like you might be on 24th and Burks, mm-hmm. but you can't walk up to 26th and Burks. You okay. die. Can't oh. So if your poppy mm-hmm. store is closed down, you can't walk through four blocks up, you could dead. Mm. Right? So, and. I'm not going to blame the young cats for that because that's always been around. Okay. Because I talk to my uncle all the time. My uncle is 25 years older than me. He's like, yo, James, that's the same shit that I was going through when I was a kid. Yeah. Wow. And you see, can, mm. there was gang territory in Philadelphia. Back then, I'm it was probably worse. I'm glad that you brought that up because I'm going to tell you why. I was just speaking with my mother and she was saying how, she was like, oh my God, it's so much better now. Like it's, no, it's you not. know, it's, it's worse nowadays. And I'm like, mom, I'm like it. It was just it was the same way back in the day. It's just that now you hear about it. you got social media, right? You know everything is just publicized now. You hear about it more, but it definitely all this stuff that's happening now definitely happened back then. Yeah, it happened you back know? then. Yeah, it's so, this is not nothing new. So there's nothing nah, new it's under not the, nothing new. It's not, nothing not, new not, under not the sun. <laughs> you know. Not, so not. yeah, I'm glad you made that point. But um, well. What direction do you see your city going in at this point for 2023? For 2023, I think yes. that um, the direction I see the city of Philadelphia going in is, um, in like two, three years, mm-hmm. crime will slow down to a halt. And this is the guy who's reason. I'm going to tell you why I feel like that. Mm-hmm. Crime will completely slow down. Look, look, if you look at the, the historic numbers of crime and homicides uh-huh. it usually spikes every 8 to 10 years I knew that Philadelphia was going to get to this point because I, oh. I looked at it historically in the numbers right okay. I'll tell you 2006 mm-hmm. we had 406 homicides I said now the 406 black men that died mm-hmm. and when you die you're going to come back that's it mm-hmm. 
I know friends. I have friends that are dead. Mm. Understand? Like I have friends that are in Brooklyn, New York, and I have friends in Frankfurt. And I have people in the South End, and mm-hmm. Katie and Kenzo, Badlands, whatever you want to call us, dead. They mm. have kids. Mm. Right? My best friend died in 2020. He has he has a son. He has a son, right? Mm. So his son's gonna grow up in that regime, mm-hmm. right? He's gonna grow up in that. Okay. So he's gonna think that I want to be cool. Right, mm-hmm. he's one. Of, I want to be cool. I want to be down with the cool kids. Okay, and that's that's what pulls the kids in. I want to be cool. I want to be the next the next big thing. I want to be yeah. next be the next King Von. I want to be talked about like King Von mm-hmm. did. It's just you know, you understand? I want to be the next big whack man. I want to be mm-hmm. the next big Gambino. But the reason why the kids have that mindset mm-hmm. is because they 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 tied into the streets because. That's all they know. Let's talk know. about why is it such a, a lack of opportunity in Philadelphia for younger, oh, for the younger generation? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I feel like personally, the money that's being invested, mm-hmm. like it's not, a, it's not enough. Like Democrats in the city of Philadelphia that predominantly control the city since the nineteen fifties or sixties, whatever you want to say, mm-hmm. they don't have enough money. So I actually like the sugar tax. Because sick attacks gives children mm-hmm. the opportunity to get early childhood education in pre-K. I like that, right? Like, okay. Taxes is what you pay your dues to society, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like you could say, oh, I don't want to pay sick attacks, but what about the children that don't benefit from it? The only problem that I have with this, the sick attacks is make sure these, that money is getting to okay. what you say it's getting to. Right. Right. Make sure that the money is getting to where you said it's it will go. Let's well, make sure. Now, speaking of which, because you know, last week we talked about um, the technology, how Philadelphia is so far behind. Like, We're for lacking. instance. Right. Yeah, yeah. For instance, you know, you were telling me how you know New York were, was using um, card. Uh, for the yeah. carts, for the transportation, for yeah, bus, MTA. and we were still using tokens, uh, tokens yeah, out right. here, yeah. So why why is the city so far behind? What's uh, going on? The lack of funding when it comes to technology and STEM. Okay. Period. Philadelphia has to get better mm-hmm. when it comes to investing into STEM and technology. The biggest tech we have is Comcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And that that's the biggest problem. We have to understand that uh, the council, no, no, council and the mayor are two different bodies of politics, right? Okay. Council doesn't work for the mayor. So people say, oh, city council, but you mm-hmm. guys are not doing your job. For, hold on. Right? Mm-hmm. The mayor is... He works for the city of Philadelphia, but he's the federal branch. Okay. City council is judicial. So it's like, oh, no, my God, I don't like city council. They're not doing their goddamn job. And they're not doing their job. But he's like, hold up, hold up, one second here. Let's just, mm-hmm. Because they say, oh, the mayor and the city council is constantly going at it. It's the reason why they go at it. Because they're not on the same, they're not, so... I don't want to get, I can't get into the legalities of it completely because mm-hmm. it's a long story. Okay. But city council is more aligned with the the, the, the the citizens of Philadelphia, although the mayor has to be, but the city council is the judicial branch and the mayor is the federal branch. Okay. So the mayor can't come in and say, yeah, I want to pass a law to bring back blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. So I want to, I want to bring back... Um, I want to bring back Stop and Frisk. Yeah, you could be able to do that without city council saying, up, oh, stop. Got you. No deal. It's no go. Well, let me ask you this. What is the city's plan? Because I see this all the time on YouTube a lot, mainly. Mm. Um, the Kensington area. You know, the drug addicts on the sidewalks, the streets, needles everywhere. Okay. They're sleeping out there. You know, what is the city's uh, plan to kind of take back those streets? Is there a plan or is it just like, you know what? I'll tell you what the plan is. All right, let's let's, let's, let's keep it real. All right, so I want to be on record to say this, and this is the the guy's truth for anybody watching. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. When the mayor was trying to push the safe injection sites, mm -hmm. to be honest, I'm attached to my own opinion. This is my opinion. My opinion. Okay. This is not facts. You can't challenge my opinion. That's why I always I, I was learned I was taught this in college. You mm -hmm. can't challenge my opinion. Okay. But you could, because you have your own opinion. We can go back and forth, but to, to be honest with you, I'm gonna break it down. Mm -hmm. My plan is Yes, please let the people know because you, I, I, I'm, it's a lot of complaining. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of complaining. I'm gonna break this down. My plan is to create Intake treatment facility centers that's wrapped around behavior health, mm -hmm. mental health, and drug abuse. Okay. Now, imagine if you were, the thing is this, no one, I don't give a fuck how rich you are. Mm -hmm. This is fact. I don't give a flying fuck how rich you are. You could mm -hmm. be Jeff Bezos or you could be the poorest of poor, right? Mm -hmm. You're not removed from trauma. Right. If I walked up and I, you know, and I hurt Jeff Bezos, he's gonna be traumatized, right? No matter how much money you got, but a lot of these people that's on heroin or opioids are people that was functional in society until they got hooked on drugs from mm -hmm. getting injured, or people like people, for instance, that had trauma they had to deal with, like mm -hmm. in the hood. We say, oh. My my brother died. My cousin died. Like mm -hmm. my condolences, rest in peace, and back to a normal life because we've been easily succumbed to crimes, death so much to the point where it becomes part of everyday life. Like we drinking water. Mm. Okay. Understand that? Like, mm -hmm. like, what can I say? I totally my, get what you're saying. It's it's become the norm in a sense. It becomes the norm in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Like, if 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 you go to the county. Mm -hmm. And the school shooting happens or somebody dies within the school's community, mm -hmm. there's therapy for all the kids. It's the same thing that needs to happen for the kids that are in public school, right? Wow. Because kids yeah. are kids. Yeah. Kids are kids. Like yeah. And they don't have that support. They don't have that support they in don't. the public or charter schools. This is what I say when I say when I say um when I I, I brought up a parent I, I actually formed a parents group. Mm-hmm. And the parents group was typically based around children's safety and public and charter schools. So you say, oh my God, children's safety. Right? Mm -hmm. Anybody change? What do you mean by children's safety? I said, okay. When I was a kid, mm -hmm. I had lost friends. There was no therapy for me. There was no mm -hmm. therapy. I had to okay. actually figure that shit out myself, right? Like, like my parents was like, just pray to God. Our therapy in the household was yeah. pray to God. Yeah, yeah. Religion. But that, right, yeah. but that don't stop your nightmares from seeing somebody brain spawn. I remember mm. on Chris Coming Warm Rav, I had a guy named L. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got his brain, he's got his, he got a bullet in his head, and around the bullet wound is pus, and his skin's and his eyes is bulging. And I'm like, yo, I had a nightmare. And my, my homie called me, Jose mm -hmm. Rivera, calls me like, yo, I had a nightmare that L came for me. And this is the shit that we was left to deal with. Like, like Oh, wow. We, we like, yo, mm -hmm. it's real. Yeah, yeah. Right, definitely. the trauma is real. Like, who is there to stop the kids mm -hmm. in the inner city from having nightmares like that? Wow. They, they're so scared to the point where they can't walk across Griscom and Warm Rap or 22nd and Burks. And, and then they get hooked on these drugs. Yeah, because they use the drugs as a way to escape. Yeah, right? exactly. I actually was going down Cayuga and B Street. I live in K9. I'm from the south side of Franklin. I'm a low end. Mm -hmm. I'm a low end guy, right? Mm -hmm. South Spain, Brooklyn, whatever, whatnot. But mm -hmm. I, 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 I grew. I was walking down the street in Cayuga, get to be in Cayuga. The guy like, yo, buy this. He had like a, he had a, a knickknack, a crystal pony. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm selling this for $2. And he's like, yo, I need to get my fix. So he's like, he's selling the pony for $2, the glass, probably like this big. He's mm -hmm. like, yo, I, uh, I just got to get my fix. I just got to. 
I'm dealing with stuff. Mm-hmm. I actually bought the pony. I bought the pony off him. Now people are like, yo, you're enabling him to go back to right. the drugs. Why would you support yeah, him? Yeah. Because I know what trauma is. I know oh. what trauma feels like. Right? Wow. Now, I can't judge him. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I can't judge him is because it's easy for somebody from the upper echelons to judge people like That's us. That's on a that lower. On a lower podium. Yeah. Go, oh, you could have got help. Yeah, it's easy. Ha- yeah, to, to judge. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have the help. I hear it all the time. I didn't have the help that you had. Right. Right, because the city of Philadelphia school budget wasn't big enough to compensate that. Wow. We had to choose therapy or food. Mm. And no black household was paying for therapy. <laughs> Nobody was paying for therapy. That, yeah. Yo, see, look, this this is the truth. Yep. In in the black household, mm-hmm. pray. That's how therapy. Yeah. That was But that therapy. didn't stop me from seeing the trauma that I've seen mm-hmm. one of my friends land with a bullet wound mm-hmm. inside of his head and the Mm-hmm. The, the bullet wound the bullet was so hot that you could see the skin around the bullet wound bulging and his eyes just puffed out wow like could you imagine seeing that shit wow. as a child and then you having nightmares about the person that died coming after you mm. like yo it's everybody everybody felt like this look you ever you have your grandparents ever pass away and your grandma sends you upstairs to go get the clothes for, the clothes mm. for your grandparents oh I want to go up there because maybe mm. grandmom's up there and she's going to smash me. To, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know? I know exactly what you mean. Right. I do. Right? Yeah. You know, you, you, your grandparents that were somebody elderly yeah, passed away. Yeah, passed away. Yeah, and, and I used to think like, oh my God, if I walk in here, I'm like, they're going to be in here. I know exactly be, what you mean. And I was young. I was yeah. like 10, you know, but yeah, right. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So, that's the problem. That's wow. trauma. That's PTSD. You go, oh my God. God, I can't walk wow, in the room I'm just thinking that's clothes. normal. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you thinking that's normal, but it's completely not. Yeah. Right? Now, that's that's that right there and I have you mm. on drugs and have you hallucinating right. and have you on things that you you're seeing things that's not really there. Mm. Well, let me ask you this. How did you get into politics? What made you, you know, because you're around politicians every day. How did that change your life, you know, being as though where you come from? Um, how, how did that? The quality of about? life. Okay. The quality of life was slowly diminishing. Like, look, I don't give a damn where you're from. Mm-hmm. The ghetto was the same across Oakland, Los Angeles, North Philly, West Philly, South Philly, Southwest, mm-hmm. Northeast, South South, Frankfurt, Kenzo, Badlands. The quality of life. What made me step into Politics was quite simple. Okay. The quality of life was slowly diminishing, and I seen that politicians had a lot of power and a lot of say in that. Mm. Right? Yeah. So a lot of politicians had the power and control over the quality of life for a lot of individuals. Let me ask you a question. Uh Imagine you being able to afford your house in 2000, and then 10 years later... You got four or five kids. Mm. Follow me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take you down the pathway. Okay. Imagine having in 2010, you being able to afford a, a way of life. In 2000, no, in 2000, you you're able to afford a way of life. In 2010, mm-hmm. you have inflation, you have taxes, you have mm-hmm. things moving up in rate. Mm-hmm. Imagine being having three, four, five kids, mm-hmm. making seven twenty five in 2010. 10 and 2020 come around you're still making the same thing but everything around you increases wow and then imagine you having three, four, five kids yeah you got hope for the future but the hope for the future didn't come with an increase in pay raise now you in the future mm-hmm. you're in the future mm-hmm. and you got three, four, five kids let me ask you a question mm-hmm. what you gonna do Tiff if somebody say yeah you're getting evicted you got three, four, five kids. There's not no no way to go. What you gonna do? You know, pe- what I know, what people will do, have done. They will, they, they will go to, turn to crime. They will turn to crime. You, know? you can't blame them. Yeah. You can't yeah. blame the people that turn Definitely. to crime. That's- and the reason why you can't blame the people that turn to crime is quite simple. Mm-hmm. Fuck, you gonna do? If somebody, you got kids. You got yeah. feet. If somebody say, Tiff, I control all the water. Mm-hmm. You need water in order to see another day more than you need food. So if I say, mm-hmm. Tiff, this is all the water, mm-hmm. I control it, 
And I look at you and say, figure it out. Wow. So if you will look at me like... Oh. And that's what a lot of people are left to do, is to right. just figure, figure it, it out. out. So you can't yeah. you can't get mad at drug dealers because drug dealers are, are entrepreneurs. They're just in the wrong business. Yeah. Yep. Right. They are. They mm-hmm. are. They're no different than these pharmaceutical companies selling... Mm-hmm. Selling <laughs> prescription opioids, drugs. prescription yeah. drugs at that point, right? Yeah. So when you when you look at that, right? You you looking at it going, if 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 business is on the same side mm-hmm. with government policies, like if government says, well, TIF businesses have the right, and they should have the right. It means it's, 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 it's that, right? Mm-hmm. And they go. This is what this is the part where price scalping and gouging goes up. Mm-hmm. Remember when when we was in the, remember when the pandemic first came around? Everybody was told to stay the fuck in the house. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And the water was running low. Uh, right, mm-hmm. and then you go back to the water. Right, you got a million people in line for water, and the guy that's selling the water goes, "You're number forty four in the line." <laughs> And uh, you gotta pay nine hundred dollars for water. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. I need this water more than I yeah. need this bacon, right? So you said that you like and he said, Tiff, I know food stamps only gave you two forty four. But in order to survive in twenty twenty, you need to have nine ninety nine. And they move that water from you and you're mm-hmm. looking at your daughter going Say, like, mommy, I need the water. It's not like I do. Right. You might ring this motherfucker through. Mm-hmm. You're like, yo, my daughter need this. So what I'm saying is desperation Yeah. increases the... If the quality of life mm-hmm. is low yep. and desperation is high, mm. here comes crime. That's the problem. That's that's a big percentage of But I do want to say this. I do want to say this. I okay. do want to big up Donald Trump for one thing. Okay. The bailout. I'm going I'm to break it down. Okay. When we first went into the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. The worst thing that could have happened was the, the kids to stay home. And then the worst, the second worst thing that happened was mm-hmm. the children to take shots. Okay. Right? Regardless of your religious belief, you're going, I don't want to take that shot. I don't want to my, I don't want to give my kid that shot. I took the shot and I'm feeling woozy. I'm shitting them. Mm-hmm. I'm taking the poops and... Facts. So you like, I don't want my child to go through that what I went through. Nobody wants their child to go through what they went through. So they're going, mm-hmm. you, in order for your child to go back to public school or charter school, you got to take this shot. Yeah. I ain't like that. That's my opinion on it. Okay. And this is a fact. Any child that was in charter or public school mm-hmm. fell behind drastically. Tiff, ask your friends that had kids... Mm-hmm. How much education and how far they fell behind in those two Doing years it. in twenty 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 one. I never thought that's about that. That's a fact, that. right? Because wow. that's a fact. They mm-hmm. fell behind. Trump was like, "Yo, send the And I think about if the kids had to stay home, mm-hmm. you as a parent, you had to do what? Stay, stay home, home. Mm-hmm. with them. There what you if go. you're a single mother? Yeah. Now you miss now going to work. So Don Trump was like, "Well, send the kids back to school." I'm going to send $800 mm-hmm. a week. He was paying people. Yeah. And this is a fact. Tiff, ask anybody that was getting mm-hmm. PPA. PUA. I'm sorry, not PPA. PPA okay. is... I'm right. sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> don't get mad at me. We don't like PPA, <laughs> but we like PPA. All right, so PUA. Okay. Donald Trump was like, yo, I'm going to cut a check every mm-hmm. week mm-hmm. for 800 plus. I don't remember the exact number. He was like, yo... The average person makes forty, fifty thousand dollars in America. I'm mm-hmm. gonna cut the check to make sure my people's okay. We asking y'all to stay home. We mm-hmm. have to cut the check because bills go on. Right. The reason why Donald Trump wanted to end mm-hmm. the unemployment early because mm-hmm. he knew inflation would hit. Follow me. He wanted to end it early because guess what? Mm. Yeah. If everybody, let, me, let oh, us know and we let's break it down. I'm, I'm, I'm about to break it down. If everybody had a Lamborghini, mm-hmm. I mean, it's 340 million Americans. If everybody had a Lamborghini, the Lamborghini would be worth nothing. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the reason why the price of... 
to keep that, and services? It went up to keep that gap. To keep the gap. I'm going to tell you why. Because, mm-hmm. look, when you went to Saks mm-hmm. or anything, King of Presser, mm-hmm. the cells were empty. The reason why the cells were empty is because everybody had money. the money to purchase it. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, the Balenciaga, the, uh, the Louis Vuitton jacket that was now $900, everybody getting that eight hundred dollars eight fifty a week. Mm-hmm. So the Balenciaga jacket that was $900 is now worth completely anything because mm. you can't keep it self. In order to keep the quality on itself, you uh-huh. have to raise the price Prices, in order yeah. for people to be able to purchase it, right? Right. You ever heard of that term? The term that says... Um, um, the higher, it's, uh, I forgot the term. Let me let me think of it. Let me think okay. of it. Let me think of it real quick. Um, cost and um, the need to have it. So Tim's is cheaper in the summer because the cost a lot less people want to have Tim's in the summer. Right. So price and demand is what I want to talk about. So yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, thanks so much for breaking that down. Um, that explains a lot. Tell everybody, you know, where they can find you, how they can support you. All right. So if you're on Instagram, you go underscore jww underscore c dot e dot o to find me. But if you really want to find me, all you gotta do is just put in James Whitehead, put in City Council because I ran for City Council in November, but they still have me on the Google. Is that? Um, although I may be Republican, I want people to understand that it's not about party. You understand that understanding your own morals and values, Mm -hmm. your family values, your code and your ethics, align that with the politician that's running. I may be Republican, but I do have a lot of views that you may align with. And I want people to understand that to listen to my word rather than my party. Right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Whitehead. I really appreciate you coming by. Thank you. All right. If everybody had a Lamborghini, mm-hmm. I mean, it's 340 million Americans. If everybody had a Lamborghini, the Lamborghini would be mm-hmm. worth nothing. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the reason why the price of to goods keep and that, services... It went up to keep that gap. To keep the gap. I'm going to tell you why. Because, mm-hmm. look, when you went to Saks mm-hmm. or anything, King of Presser, mm-hmm. the cells were empty. The reason why the cells were empty is because everybody had, had money. the money to purchase it. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, the Balenciaga, the, uh, the Louis Vuitton jacket that was now $900, everybody getting that eight hundred dollars eight fifty a week. Mm-hmm. So, the Balenciaga jacket that was $900 is now worth completely anything because mm. you can't keep it self. In order to keep the quality on itself, you uh-huh. have to raise the price Prices. in order yeah. for people to be able to purchase it, right? Right. You ever heard of that term? The term that says... Um, Um, the higher, it's, uh, I forgot the term. Let me mm-hmm. let me think of it. Let me think okay. of it. Let me think of it real quick. Um, cost and um, the need to have it. So Tim's is cheaper in the summer because the cost a lot less people want to have Tim's in the summer. Right. So price and demand is what I want to talk about. So yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, thanks so much for breaking that down. Um, that explains a lot. Tell everybody, you know, where they can find you, how they can support you. All right. So if you're on Instagram, you go underscore jww underscore c dot e dot o to find me. But if you really want to find me, all you gotta do is just put in James Whitehead, put in City Council because I ran for City Council in November, but they still have me on the Google. Is that? Um, although I may be Republican, I want people to understand that it's not about party. You understand that understanding your own morals and values, Mm -hmm. your family values, your code and your ethics, align that with the politician that's running. I may be Republican, but I do have a lot of views that you may align with. And I want people to understand that to listen to my word rather than my party. Right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Whitehead. I really appreciate you coming by. Thank you. All right.